Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My girlfriend kept giving me the same gift for five years now. She's furious that I finally walked away. I have always considered my girlfriend to be my soulmate. We have been together for five long and wonderful years and I have loved every moment of it. There was just one reoccurring issue. She kept gifting me the same thing over and over again. At first I didn't mind but after a while it started to feel repetitive and thoughtless. I love her. But I just wish she would put a little more thought into the gifts she gives me. Who would have thought that something as trivial as gifts could cause such a huge rift between us? But it did. We had an incredible year with so many memories and a lot of plans we had made for the future. I dropped so many hints so she would know what she could get me because I thought maybe she just wasn't good at it. So I was determined to help her learn. Since we started dating, I never once gave her the same gift, except she asked for it. I always came up with something thoughtful and for someone who loved receiving gifts, you would think that she knows how to pick gifts too. God knows I couldn't take one more watch as a present. Don't get me wrong, the watches were always elegant, but they were too predictable and I had grown tired of it. This year was the first time I intentionally threw hints at her for what I would like because I decided to take responsibility. I'll say things like I'll really like to have that, or this would fit me well, or I see this in my nearest future just so that she can catch my drift. I really hoped she got it this time. Sitting at the dinner table, I couldn't help but feel disappointed at seeing another beautiful watch. That was it. I couldn't take it anymore, so I decided it had become a problem we needed to talk about. I wanted to understand her thought process, because I don't think anyone likes to get the same gift every year. I scanned my mind for ways to bring this up without causing problems, but I realized I just had to say it. We needed to have an honest conversation, and that was what we would have. I was nervous, but I knew that if I didn't say something, I would end up holding on to this resentment forever. When I brought it up, she immediately became defensive. She told me that I was being ungrateful and that she put a lot of effort into finding the perfect gift for me, but I could tell from how she talked that she wasn't truly invested in finding a solution to our problem. The conversation quickly escalated. Before I knew it, we were shouting at each other. My girlfriend accused me of not appreciating her and I accused her of not putting any effort into our relationship. That's when she let it slip. She said, I only buy you the same thing because I know you like it, and it's easier for me. I was stunned. All these years I had been under the impression that she was just being lazy and thoughtless with her gift giving, but she was just trying to make things easier for herself. I felt like she had taken the last five years of our relationship and thrown them down the drain. It dawned on me that this was the same attitude she had with everything else that had to do with me. She did the barest minimum and made no effort at all. She already knew I loved her so there was no point trying. Another thing that this scenario pointed out to me was the fact that she was selfish and I couldn't count on her. She only cared about what was best for her, and didn't have my interest or well-being at heart. Different other events came to my mind and they all seemed to have this theme. I remember she came by my house one time. I didn't have what she wanted to eat because I hadn't gone grocery shopping for the week, so I gave her my credit card to get whatever she wanted. She returned with some items to cook and noticed she had picked a rotten item, but instead of throwing it away, she cooked with it. When the food was ready, she served me very enthusiastically, and when I asked her why she wasn't eating, she said she was no longer hungry. That was surprising because she was the one who complained of being hungry. I probed and she finally said it was because she cooked with the rotten item and next thing she wanted to go home. I knew it was because she didn't want to eat the food and was very hungry so she wanted to go home to get something else. It dawned on me that just like this gift situation she was never going to have my best interest at heart. I loved her deeply and lately we have been speaking about getting married but I don't think I can do it. Marriage is a lifelong commitment, and if I commit to someone I need to be sure without any doubt that I can trust them and that they are committed to me in the same way if not more. I didn't see this for us no matter how much it hurt. This had to end. The next day when things had settled down a bit I asked that we go out and I broke things off with her. She pleaded with me and promised to do better but I couldn't accept it. It wasn't just the surface issues we were having. It was a sign of a deeper problem, and if we were not even married yet, and I couldn't trust her then there was no hope for our marriage. I told her I was sorry but I took my life seriously and with the turn of events I didn't consider us a good fit anymore. It was a difficult and emotional decision but I knew it was right for me. I needed someone who would love and respect me and make an effort to be considerate and thoughtful in our relationship. It had been two weeks since our breakup and most of my family members thought I was overreacting. I don't know what she told them. 
Frankly, I didn't care. I don't blame them, though, because they were expecting me to tell them we were getting married instead of that we had broken up. My mom asked me why I wanted to throw away a good five-year relationship. They didn't see all the things I saw and I was the one who would be married to her, not them, so I didn't let them sway me. It was my decision to make and not theirs. My mom was disappointed because she thought she was getting closer to having her grandkids. Even after I explained exactly what happened, she was still blinded by my ex's charm. It was as though she could do no wrong in her eyes. It is either that or she just wanted to manipulate me into getting married so she could have grandchildren. I decided that I wasn't going to let anyone pressure me into marriage. I know that the perfect woman for me is out there and I will do all I can to find her. Marriage is too important to make a mistake. I don't believe in divorce, so if I was going to marry, I had to make sure it was the right woman. I am a grow old with you kind of guy. Even after I explained to my whole family, they still wouldn't get off my back. My family is lovely, but the disadvantage of having a large family and being close to your extended family is that everyone is in everyone's business. Gosh, they were so nosy and according to them wanted to make sure I made the right choice. It was getting too much for me because I didn't want to break up. I mean, I love this girl and had invested five years into our relationship, meaning it was pretty serious. My family members were not helping matters and needed to get over her and move on. So I stopped entertaining any marriage conversations or anything that had to do with my ex until everyone got the memo. I was not a kid and didn't need their advice because I had made my choice and no one would make me change it. My ex has been going around spreading rumors that she was the one who broke up with me and I wasn't man enough. If she means I wasn't man enough to dump her sorry ass years ago, then yes. I ignored her, because it was just her way of getting me to engage with her. My plan was to behave like she never existed, which I know would get on her nerves because she likes attention and doesn't like to be ignored. I planned to ignore her so much that she would even almost doubt her own existence. I thought we could go through this breakup like civilized adults, but that's not in her vocabulary. She was a drama queen. Now I'm wondering how I loved her and put up with her for so long. If we got married, I would have been in big trouble. My ex is very active on social media, so I didn't like how our private life was being put up for discussion and for people to make their own conclusions and comment. Some were very insensitive. The most annoying part was that she wasn't even telling the truth. When I first saw what she was saying about me, I took a screenshot of some of her texts. Those pleading with me to make things work and some of my responses and I saved them somewhere just in case something happened so I have my evidence. I even saved some of her voice notes. She probably thought she could lie because she knew I wouldn't go on social media battle with her but at this point I was rethinking it. What pushed me to the wall was when she brought my family into her little game and I was scared of commitment and a coward. This was the height of disrespect. If she left it between her and me I wouldn't care but now it had gotten out of hand so I released all my evidence including her voice notes and said my side of the story and made sure to paint her very bad. I must admit I exaggerated most of the things I said but it was still true which was my revenge. I was the one with the proof. She had no proof and went about running her mouth. My post did what I expected. It silenced her for good. She was trying to grow her following so she could start being paid as an influencer so I'm not sure what impact this would have on her goals. All I cared about was to tell my truth. For all I know it may even help her. Good or bad publicity is still publicity. Ita, I was on your side until you exaggerated what happened. You could have just said it as is because now you are no longer innocent. Tanta serves your ex right. I don't get why people like to make themselves look like victims when they know that they are not. So I, 28 female, have an Instagram account that I use to use to post my artwork on. I managed to get a little over 35,000 followers at one point, but it has since dropped to 30,000 as it has been inactive for some time as a little over three years ago I lost interest in it. I haven't logged in for over two years. The issue is with my brothers, 29, girlfriend Katie, 26 who is a wannabe influencer. She has about 6,000 followers but acts like it's a lot more. It all started at our little sister's 11th birthday. I took a picture with my little sister and went to post her on my personal Instagram which only has about 62 followers. Its account is private and my followers are all family and friends. Katie sees me and makes a comment about how I should build my brand more. My little sister, who dislikes Katie, was standing next to me, brought up my art account, and how I have more than Katie on it. Katie looked confused and asked what she meant, so I explained about my old art account. Katie asked to see it, so I show her the account. Katie gave me a weird look and walked away, and I thought that was that. The next day, she was over at my parents' again. She pulled me aside and starts asking about the account, 
namely how I managed to gain that following. I simply tell her the truth. I just started posting my art and people liked it and my followers grew over the span of five years. She asked why I stopped posting and I explained I lost interest. So then went on to say well if you're not using it you should give it to someone who will. Confused I ask what she means. She said I should give her the account so she can use it since I'm not. Saying it's a waste to have the account just sitting there. I tell her no as I might want to start using it again someday. She gets mad and talks about how it's not fair how I have more followers than her on an account I don't use. She said since I'm not using it I'm being selfish and basically in lesser words demanded I give it to her. I again tell her no she can't have it and she gets mad and walks away. My brother calls me up later and tells me she had been complaining about me all day and he also asked me to give it to her. I tell him no and that they need to stop asking. My brother groans and repeats what Katie said. You're not even using it, why can't you just give it to her? I simply tell him no, it's my account whether I use it or not. He then accused me of doing this to pick on Katie and also accused me of showing her the page to rub it in her face. He calls me the a hole for keeping the account when I know how much Katie wants to have a following. I told him that I made the account and built the following and I decided what to do with it. Now he's mad at me because Katie won't stop complaining and she's making his life hell. I now wonder if maybe I'm the a-hole here since as of now I have no plan to use the account and maybe I'm being selfish in keeping it. Ada for refusing to give my brother's girlfriend my abandoned Instagram account with 30,000 followers. Oh hell nah is Katie entitled to your Christmas present if it is something she really wants since like she learned that the thing in question existed and you might exchange it anyway. Why not your paycheck? Not like you use all of it anyway, right? If Katie thinks that her wanting something somehow warrants any sort of obligation on other people she needs to grow up and smell all the sand she's going to be told to go pound and your brother seriously needs to stop enabling that behavior. She wants a following. Okay, build one be interesting. Maybe she's lacking followers because her personality is about as interesting as wet newspaper from yesterday. To I don't think she's cut out to be an influencer. She can't even successfully influence you. The facts are your followers will ditch her once she reactivates the account and starts spamming them with content that is different from what they signed up for. Even though the account is inactive now you may want to reactivate it in the future. If she takes the account and pisses off your followers it will negatively affect your own reputation even if she's upfront about being a different person. I know we like to be anti-influencers on Reddit. As if it's a fake job but it takes hard work to build up and retain a following in the face of constant competition and changing trends. Overnight followers are not the answer to Katie's problems. Continuing to do the things that netted her the first 6,000 on her own account are. My mother lives in South America and I live in the UK. I've lived here for almost 15 years. I married here and had two children. When I first got pregnant I begged my mom to come and stay with me for a couple of weeks as I was going to give birth to my first child and her first child. We'd pay for her ticket of course. But she said it wasn't her problem that I decided to have a baby on the other side of the world and she couldn't come anyway because she had work and studies. I sadly had a miscarriage last month and almost died from complications, hemorrhaged severely, went into cardiac arrest and had to undergo emergency surgery to save my life. I was telling a friend from church about it later and how after a scary situation in life, even as a grown-up I still wished for a mommy cuddle. My friend called me a couple of days later and very kindly said she and her husband would like to pay for a ticket for my mom to come so we could spend the holidays together. I called my mom who told me her passport was expired and a new one will only be ready by mid-January. Oh that kind of sucks I thought but I guess I can wait a bit more. But then she told me that she she can only come in February after my sister's graduation. At this point I became so upset. I've lived here 15 years and not once did anyone bother to come and visit me. It's always my husband and I paying to go and see them at least once a year. They've always had each other for events like these. My parents were there for my sister's marriages, first births, holidays, when they're ill or going through hard times. I haven't had that and dealt with every difficult situation with only my husband by my side. I told her not to bother anymore and canceled her ticket. Even almost dying is still not enough to get her to leave things for a while and come and stay with her eldest daughter for a few weeks. I'll spend the holidays with the only people who seem to care about me, my children and my husband. Ita. Guess I needed to vent a little. Thank you everyone so much for reading and responding to my post. I didn't expect this post to blow up like this. I think I'm ready to accept that my family moved on and I'm not exactly a priority. More of a second. 
Third thought. I did think that paying for a ticket, again, would have been enough for my mom to want to come visit, since all she needed to do was pack and drive the 20 minutes to the airport. Plus, as a South American, a trip to England is very much the trip of a lifetime. It's a sad realization that you're not as nearly as important to your family as you imagined, but I guess at least now I can move on. Thank you all so much for the good wishes, the lovely messages of encouragement and reality checks. I appreciate it. Happy holidays to all of you. Ta, there is very clear favoritism judging by how they treat your sister versus how they treat you. You have not seen them for nearly 15 years and you are simply showing them the same amount of contact they showed you. Tenta, your mom obviously could have visited you and has made the choice not to. All I want to say is that while you may not have any other family to rely on, you obviously have really great friends because not many people would hear about your struggles and then go to the action of giving you money to buy a plane ticket for your mother. So, if you have the energy, try and spend time with and build up your relationship with the good people you have around you and keep your family where they are, on the other side of the world. I'm sorry for your loss, and I hope you and your family are coping as best you can. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.